afternoon. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you, to engage with you on a conversation with regards to the status of women in Egypt post-revolution. In January and February of 2011, Egyptians managed in only 18 days to overthrow a 30-year dictatorship. There were massive protests, but peaceful in nature. They withstood rain, cold, riot police, tear gas. A new barrier of fear was broken. But especially for women of Egypt, that barrier was even more profound. They stood side by side next to men, demanding freedom. A lot of these women had never even been to a demonstration. A lot of them practiced safe activism from the safety of their computers. Some had already been subjected to violence through the Mubarak regime. Some were activists. But many had never ever stepped outside in the comfort of activism online. The time had now come, however, to make their voices heard. Women are an integral part of the Egyptian revolution, and they are credited with having bring, brought down the uh, Mubarak regime. The revolution left Egyptians with a sense of euphoria, especially for women. Come on, they were next to men uh, overthrowing a dictator in just 18 days. What could they do under a democracy? The sky's the limit. However, the very same night Mubarak stepped down, a shadow was cast on the future of women in Egypt when CBS's Lair Logan was brutally assaulted by a mob in Tahrir Square while covering the celebrations. That would be the reality for a lot of Egyptian women in the two years since the revolution, sexually assaulted by mobs in Tahrir Square. However, for Egyptian women, that's not the only negative thing they went through. Since the revolution, 17 women were forced by the military to undergo humiliating and intrusive virginity tests. Many female activists were beaten up, detained, tortured, sexually assaulted, just for being activists, just for being in Tahrir. I know a good friend of the Osler Freedom Forum's Mona Tahawi, who's an Egyptian-American activist and public speaker, had both of her arms broken when she was protesting next to Tahrir Square. In a famous worldwide incident, a veiled woman was even stripped and brutally beaten in Tahrir. Even after the transition from a military regime to a democratically elected president, a lot of Egyptian female activists are detained without warrant, subjected to sexual abuse and assault while in detention. Again, over the past two years, the reality of mob sexual assaults and Tahrir is a sad reality for Egyptian women. The government, within two years, has failed to protect them. Tahrir remains unlit, and women are subjected to the most brutal kinds of sexual assault by hundreds of men. They call them the, the circle of death, the circle of hell. It starts with a few people and grows into a full mob. I know this year's theme is challenging power. It is power on behalf of a government to choose not to act when it sees such atrocities. But the citizens of Egypt, the men and the women of Egypt, are challenging that power by choosing to act. In the wake of all of these sexual assaults in Tahrir, many civil society groups, many private citizens formed individual groups to go down, patrol the square, protect women, and rescue them from sexual assault. One of them is the Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment which is an initiative by many Egyptian NGOs, such as the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, Harass Map, Nazra Egypt, and others. Another one is Tahrir Bodyguard. I have a very soft spot for Tahrir Bodyguard because it was one Tuesday when I was at the office on my way to Tahrir Square to protest undemocratic actions by our, the newly elected president. A panic immediately gripped me. I was afraid to go to Tahrir Square and voice my opinion. I had never wanted to be more in Tahrir Square, but I was afraid because I did not want to suffer through the fate of women sexually assaulted in Tahrir by a mob, especially that I was going alone. A panic attack in this case ended up being a positive um, change because right then I decided that this had to end. I created a Twitter account 
and what started as a one-woman show on Twitter grew into a group of men and women wearing helmets and vests and a uniform to be recognized, patrolling Tahrir Square and protecting women. The movement has now grown into an executive team of about 10 people. And let me tell you, there's 60% of that executive team are women. It's really horrific to imagine a mob sexual assault. Let me try to show you a small glimpse of what women go through. You saw some people in helmets and vests, and you saw some people in white t-shirts. These are the volunteers of movements like Tahrir Bodyguard, Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment, and many civilians who are trying to rescue the girl. The video ends with the girl being taken to a shop. And even when she was inside the safety of the shop, the mob tried to break into the shop to take her. The citizens of Egypt choose to act where the government has failed. The reality for, for women's rights in, in, in Egypt right now, it's a bit bleak. But there's always hope, especially that Egyptian women are empowered. After groups like Tahrir Bodyguard and Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment decided to go to, the, to Tahrir Square and take an active part in preventing this from happening, the sexual assaults have considerably been less. They usually happen when there are big protests, which has now, have now subsided. But even when large protests were happening, the, the assaults were considerably less because people knew that they would, go, they would not go unpunished. Throughout history, women were the first targets of oppressive minds. And oppressive women was the favorite game of a lot of dictators. But however, we, the women of Egypt, acknowledge that societies only develop when you acknowledge women as equals and not obedient followers. This is not just about our right to be equals, to walk safely, to protest safely. This is, about, this is not just about sexual harassment, this is about humanity. We are putting up a fight. We're going down, we're not afraid. This is Egyptian women in 1951, and this is Egyptian women today. The difference between these two is 60 plus years. We have not stopped protesting, and we will not stop. Finally, I'll leave you with a poster that symbolizes the, the struggle for women's issues today. It says, the voice of a woman is a revolution. When they tried to silence the voice of women, Egyptian women were even more defined. They went to Tahrir Square and started chanting that, you know, our voice is a revolution. Thank you. <laughs>